Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm Rudy McLennan coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. At least 79 people are dead and hundreds are feared missing after a fishing boat carrying migrants sank off the coast of southern Greece on Wednesday. Ongoing search and rescue operations have saved over 100 people so far. Authorities have described the tragedy as one of Europe's deadliest maritime disasters in recent years. The incident occurred when the vessel left Libya for Italy with an estimated 750 passengers on board. The Greek government has declared three days of national mourning. President Katerina Sakilaropoulou visited survivors and expressed grief for the dead and closeness to the injured. Pope Francis is expected to be discharged from hospital over the next few days. In a statement, the Holy See said that the Pope is recovering speedily and devoting himself to work-related activities and prayer. The Holy Father underwent abdominal surgery at Rome's Gemelli Hospital on the 7th of June. Later, his surgeon, Dr Sergio Alfieri, said he was stable and could now proceed with his scheduled trips to Portugal and Mongolia in August. The Vatican had postponed the Pope's public and private audiences until the 18th of June as a precautionary measure during his period of convalescence. The United Nations Refugee Agency is urging coordinated action with forced displacements having reached a new high of close to 110 million. The agency's annual study, named Global Trends in Forced Displacement 2022, estimates that 108.4 million people had been forcibly displaced by the end of last year due to war, persecution, violence and violations of human rights. The agency says that forced migration around the globe is showing no signs of slowing down in 2023. They say more people than ever were forced from their homes due to the war in Ukraine, other conflicts and climate-related turmoil. UN Secretary General for Peace Operations Jean-Pierre Lacroix warned that approximately 3.5 billion people living in climate hotspots may face worsening risks to peace and security. A report prepared by a prominent rights organisation has revealed that 700 Christians were killed by jihadists in Nigeria last month, marking the end of the term of outgoing President Mohamedou Buhari, who stepped aside for new head of state Bola Tinubu on the 29th of May. The report was released on the 12th of June by the International Society for Civil Liberties and Rule of Law. Most of the killings took place in the plateau state of the West African nation, where 350 believers were slaughtered by armed Muslim Fulani herdsmen. 190 killings were carried out in Benue state, with another 100 in Kaduna state. The report says that as many as 1,100 Christians were hacked to death by Islamists in the last 60 days. That's an average of 17 per day. The report also says that over the past 160 days, close to 1,400 people have been kidnapped by insurgents. Between April the 12th and June the 12th, 100 churches were either razed to the ground or damaged, and 20 pastors were attacked. The father of one of two students killed in a knife and van attack in Nottingham in England made an emotional plea during a vigil held by the university on Wednesday. The father of medical student Grace O'Malley Kumar Sanjoy told the students gathered there to look after each other. He said that he wished the love those gathered there had were everywhere. Thousands gathered to take part in the vigil for the two students and a school caretaker. The attacks on Tuesday also claimed the lives of history student Barnaby Weber and father and grandfather Ian Coates. A 31-year-old man remains in police custody after being arrested on suspicion of murder. At 5.30pm local time on Thursday, June the 15th, Nottingham City Council held a vigil for the three victims in the Old Market Square, with a minute silence being held at 6pm. A recent study reveals that the US states of Alabama and Texas are top scorers for religious liberty. The Napa Legal Study evaluating religious freedom in each of the 50 American states says that Alabama and Texas unambiguously protect religious freedom while also setting up non-profits for success through straightforward corporate tax and fundraising measures. The study, titled Faith and Freedom Index, says that many states hinder faith-based non-profit organisations rather than protecting and supporting them. Napa Legal Executive Director Mary Margaret Beecher said state laws should encourage and not hinder such organisations. 
She said Nevada and Maryland received low scores because they only provide minimal and vague protections for faith-based non-profit organizations. Meanwhile, the US Conference of Catholic Bishops has invited Catholics to pray, reflect and act to promote Religious Freedom Week, which begins on June the 22nd on the feast of Saints Thomas More and John Fisher and ends on June the 29th, which is the Solemnity of Saints Peter and Paul. Police officials in England have loosened bail restrictions on a Christian woman arrested twice for praying silently outside an abortion clinic. West Midlands police will no longer prohibit pro-life activist Isabel Von Spruce from being close to an abortion centre. However, the legal advocacy group Alliance Defending Freedom said she still faces the possibility of further charges. The arrests of Ms Von Spruce came after the city of Birmingham implemented a public health protection order in September that forbids anyone from protesting within a certain radius of an abortion facility. After her most recent arrest, the police imposed bail conditions that prohibited her from accessing public spaces even beyond the zone established by the order. For the first time in seven years, bishops and theologians on the Joint International Commission for Theological Dialogue between the Roman Catholic Church and the Orthodox Church have brought out a joint statement. Synodality and primacy in the second millennium and today was issued earlier this month in Alexandria in Egypt. It is viewed as a follow-up to a statement brought out in 2016 in the Italian town of Chieti. In the latest joint statement, both parties have urged the churches to continue along the dialogue of charity in order to restore full communion. They said that the churches of the East and the West should purify their histories of misunderstanding and mistrust to authentically understand synodality and primacy in the light of theological principles, canonical requirements and liturgical practices. 18 members of the Catholic Church and delegates for 10 Orthodox churches took part in the June the 1st to 7th meeting held at the Patriarchal Cathedral of the Annunciation in Alexandria. The Joint International Commission was established by the Holy See and 14 autocephalous Orthodox churches. Catholic bishops in Northern Ireland are voicing grave concerns over proposed regulations in the British Parliament making it compulsory for secondary schools to teach abortion access and the prevention of pregnancy. The bishop said Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, Chris Heaton Harris, has already imposed some of the most radical abortion laws in the world without seeking the people's consent. The bishops called on the Secretary of State to respect the internationally recognised rights of parents and the principles of consultation and devolution in the Good Friday Agreement between Belfast and London and to withdraw the legislation. The prelates say Mr Heaton Harris seems determined to impose an ideologically biased view of abortion on all schools, irrespective of parental rights or school ethos. They have also called on all politicians and lawmakers in Northern Ireland to oppose the proposed regulations. The US government and human rights activists are demanding the immediate release of a 19-year-old Uyghur university student who was sentenced for supposedly advocating extremism in China. Camille Wyatt was imprisoned in December last year after posting a video on social media about the nationwide white paper protest the previous month. During the demonstrations, protesters held up white sheets of paper to show their defiance against COVID-19 restrictions and the lack of freedom of speech. They were sparked by a fatal lockdown fire in an apartment building in Xinjiang that killed around 40 Uyghurs. Wyatt was among dozens of young people around China who were detained in relation to the protests. A Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson said that authorities sentenced Wyatt on the 25th of March. Rights activists have called on the People's Republic of China to ensure respect for her human rights and fundamental freedoms, including a fair trial. A fresh round of violence broke out in the northeastern Indian state of Manipur between members of the Hindu-dominant Mete and Christian Kuki tribal communities. For more than a month, the state has been witnessing clashes between the communities. In the latest incident, nine people were killed after violence erupted one day ago. Media reports quote army sources as saying that violence broke out in the Kamenlok area. For the past few days, the area has had a curfew in place. An armed mob unleashed violence on a village dominated by Kukis, with both sides suffering casualties in the gun battle that followed. 
The place where the violence broke out is situated on the border of the East Impal district dominated by members of the Métis community and the Kangokpi district where tribals have the upper hand. Separately, unknown attackers torched the house of Minister Nemcha Kigpen in Lampel in the Impal West district on Wednesday night. No one was injured in the incident. Russia's State Duma, or Lower House of Parliament, has supported legislation that bans gender alteration surgery. Under President Vladimir Putin, lawmakers have increasingly denounced and cracked down on what they call non-traditional lifestyles promoted by the West. The proposed legislation forbids the state from changing a person's gender in their records. An official document by the parliament added it would be illegal to carry out any medical procedures to change a person's primary and secondary sex characteristics. The bill must now pass its second and third readings in the State Duma, as well as a single reading in the Upper House Federation Council before it can be signed into law by President Putin. Finally, former Anglican Bishop Richard Payne will officially become a member of the Catholic Church on the 2nd of July. Payne served as the Bishop of Monmouth Diocese in Wales from 2013 to 2019. He will be received into full communion with the Catholic Church by Monsignor Keith Newton, who is the Ordinary of the Personal Ordinariate of Our Lady of Walsingham. The ceremony will take place at St Basil and St Gladys Catholic Church in Newport. Born in 1956, Payne's formation for the Anglican priesthood was at St Michael's College in Clondaff. The Personal Ordinariate of Our Lady of Walsingham was established in 2011 by Pope Benedict XVI to help Anglicans seeking full communion with the Catholic Church. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us again tomorrow for more. And do remember you can always visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.